Okay guys, welcome back. You are watching the SCPL. I'm Kix, your host, and joining me for the fourth and final game of our second set today is a very tired Rapid. That's true. It's been a very long day for me. It'll be a very longer one tomorrow, and the next day will uh, be one of the... Wow. <laughs> it just gets more, more enthusiastic here uh, with you casting, so hopefully... I'm not having a negative effect on any of this by keeping you up so late, but you did, you did offer, so uh, thank you once again, of course. But let's quickly get into the next game. I don't want to keep you too much longer. Uh, I'm just quickly setting up the replay with the right players. As we did just see, red take down white 3-0, so this is going to be the ceremonial match here. And it's going to be between two players that I'm just putting in the overlay. And it's going to be on Aztec, so... Should be kind of cool, but let's quickly head on over to the overlay, and then we can get started with uh, who's playing. As I just quickly set the colors. Okay, uh, so here we go. Okay, so for Red, in our fourth and final game today, can he make it a 4-0 sweep for Red? It's going to be Fisheye. Now, this isn't the same Fisheye as back in the day. It's a different one, but he's still a very good player. Went 3 for 2 last round. Is 0 for 2 this round so far, but still doing a pretty good job for his team. Back out here again for the fourth week in a row, a third week in a row even. And his opponent going to be trying to put his name on the table. Trying to put White back with a little bit of pride as well. He went 4 for 0 last round himself. But is he going to be able to stop the 4 for 0 coming in from Fisheye? It's going to be up to Bai, who is another Terran player. I'm not sure if Eskia is around, but he would be loving the series. He loves Terran players. But either way, Fisheye versus Bai, and they are going to be playing on Neo Aztec. Neo Aztec very quickly. Three player map, 12, 4, and 8 o'clock spawns. Three gas bases, uh, uh, 11, 3, and 7. And uh, Mineral only thirds, which can come into this in TVP. Now, whether or not they played on the IC Cup version of this map or the official version, uh, in the official version there is a droppable natural, which we could see here. Uh, but I'm not really too sure what version of the map they played on. IC Cup changed it without really thinking it through. Uh, but either way, let's head on to the game and let's get started with our fourth and final game of this evening. And starting us off here in the 8 o'clock position, it's going to be fighting for red, uh, sorry, fighting for white even, it's going to be the orange Terran, bye. Sorry, I keep forgetting that I'm supposed to. Uh, uh, yeah, my bad. The next turn. Uh, and his opponent in the yellow, this is our Protoss player, Fisheye. Finally, we get a Protoss. You know, we've had a lot of TPZs, but uh, obviously PVT can be a very long matchup. Uh, it is one where the Terran player... I guess we should maybe break this down a little bit. So I'll get some of your thoughts from the Terran perspective. But from the Protoss perspective, uh, it feels like you are kind of fighting against inevitability. From a Terran perspective, like I would say this matchup is very much... It's a case of defending until you can eventually try and push and win. Like, there is a lot of cheese you can do as Terran. There's certainly a lot more cheese Protoss can do. I know that there is a specific form of cheese you can do in this matchup, which uh, which makes Artosis' blood boil. And I very much remember some of his choice comments from back in the day about Protoss. But uh, DT's very powerful. Reaver's very powerful early on. And a lot of it comes down as a Terran player just trying to weather the storm early on long enough to get your third base, to get your upgrades, and to get that powerful mech ball that you do really need to try and deal with that Protoss army. Yeah, um, but once you have that, that's what I'm going to say, uh, then uh, 
and it can be very difficult to deal with. Uh, realistically, um, I mean, the way that the game starts does have an impact. Usually we see safe starts, um, but there's always the opportunity to get uh, economically aggressive on both sides. You go for like an early Nexus or an early Command Center. That's not what we're seeing. We're actually just seeing about the most standard opener. It's just going to be a one gate uh, into probably an expand. It is a forward Unless... gate, though. Oh, yeah, it is forward. So we're going to see Zealots most likely rallied. He is scouting. Now, uh, there's not going to be a second gateway, if I'm not mistaken. He's, yeah, he's waiting. There's a gas on the way. Yeah, he's going to go into a Cybernetic score. But this is a strong build. Now, if you haven't seen this kind of map before, uh, they are uh, high ground naturals compared to the low ground mains. And it does mean early zealots like this can be very strong. But it's also why you see this one rex fast expand coming in by by. I know this was popularized back in 2009 on the map Byzantium 2. And then it was used again uh, on pretty much any map like this. So Gladiator, Neo Aztec, trying to think of the other ones, Byzantium 1, of course. Um, I think that's. There are a few, but I can't really think of too many of them. But either way, this is going to be the annoyance here for Bai. He's going to have to deal with this first seller. There is, of course, the probe here as well. That does do a lot of damage. And is he going to be able to delay the command center? Looks like the probe goes down immediately. And two Marines going to do a great, great job here. Great wall. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, that is a great wall. The idea is that the Marines can fit through there, nothing else can. So uh, this is actually really immaculately done. Um, perfect placement. So Bai definitely uh, practiced this many, many times. Uh, I mean, the Zealot can be a little bit annoying, but it won't be able to deal super ultra critical damage. Wow, gets that SCV, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, and that's going to delay the bunker just a little bit, and that means the second Zealot, as it moves in, is going to be able to do a little bit more. Now, of course, he does have that really great wall off, uh, something that's very important to practice as a Terran player, uh, but Fisheye is going to get out with both of his Zealots here, and that's, that's a small victory for him, as he is going to be able to get the Nexus up behind and start to go into his core and his uh, third pylon as well. Yep, uh, so core coming up, and that means that we're about to start this kind of weird dance. What is happening here? Are four Marines gonna kill two Zealots? How is, help me, help me here, Kicks. Well, it's now three for three, but nice target firing there. Bye-bye, gonna take down one of those Zealots. Uh, that's certainly one thing that Zealot said, bye-bye as it went off to the collar, and uh, the Stop it, kicks. <laughs> by coming back out again with a little bit more target firing, just being as annoying as yeah. possible, trying to harass down those zealots, doesn't want the Protoss getting too big of an army, and he's actually mm -hmm. hiding an SCV in the main, so he's going to get a good scout yeah. later on. Not only getting the SCV in in the first place, but then hiding it and coming through to see the extra gateway. Yeah, oh, he's also... Oh, okay, I thought that was going to be a little bit more impactful than a pylon, but uh, he does yeah. get in for the extra scout. He sees range as well, very, very important. Sees the front gateway, although you could probably assume that happened. And here we go, the Dragoon finally in. Gonna clear out the SCV. Now, this is gonna be the moment where we're gonna see if Fisheye is gonna go for some kind of tech, or if he is gonna go for a quick third. And you see immediately adding that Citadel down. He is going straight for Templar, and he is gonna go for a DT build here to try and punish this early economy lead. Bye bye. Yeah, this is actually really cool. Uh, I do, I, I love it when one player makes one decision, the other player makes the counter, right? Because that puts the burden on both players. The player that made the decision to either go aggressive or defensive has to commit to that and execute it very well. And anytime you see good players execute uh, difficult builds well, I mean, that's, that's the best part about StarCraft for me, um, oh whether boy. it's aggressive or defensive. Now, is this going to be a DT drop, or is this just going to be for Zealot Speed? Is he going to go for a Bulldog? There's a few different options that could come off of the back of this. Now, he is saving his gas. Well, this could be a very... Be? This could be very difficult. Oh, it is. Yeah. They are playing on the official one, so they've got the droppable natural as well. Not that that really matters for Protoss, but Templar Archives. It is Artosis' worst nightmare. It's a DT drop. Yeah, and this is not popular, by the way, guys. Uh, this is if you are a bad person. Like, if you take joy in the suffering of others, this is how you do it. Yeah. DT drops are 
Uh, the, the problem with DT drops is that initially, especially back in the day when Boxer was really good, nobody was really good at really anything. Everybody was just kind of okay. And then there were moments where players would figure things out, like like Shark figuring out Muta Mike. Like, oh my god, like that just totally breaks the matchup. It's game changing. Yeah. Or Boxer figuring out that, by the way, lots of bunkers are really good early. You should just build a lot of them. Or proxies or floating or like any of these uh, innovations. It, it was an era where you you could realistically win if you were more creative than your opponent. Nowadays, I mean, it's been 20 years and I can still f smell the fresh paint. You know, the China has never been used. It's a game of dreams, and it is. Uh, it really is. Um, and one of the reasons that it is is because everybody's figured out not everything, but like you know, 90% of everything. And one of those things is DT drops. So anytime you figure out how to defend against something, that limits the window of effectiveness for it. And for DT drops, that window is just very low, very small. Um, and so look at what what uh Fi is doing he's got a yeah. turret right he's got turrets in his main he's got scans and like come on man dts are gonna struggle against all of them he does need to be careful though because if the shell does get into his main yes he has a couple of scans but you can keep picking up to avoid those he actually needs a turret near his mineral line now i say this as someone who has lost the game because of this like you the shuttle is probably going to go down, but it's coming in from a good angle, and you're going to get hit by one of the... Oh, no, never mind. Oh, the DTs are going to get into the main, uh, but there is going to be wow. a scan. But how much damage but can how? they do before they die? That yeah, DT is out of scan quiet. range. Yeah. Wow, this is actually a lot more damage than I expected. He wants to avoid running into turret range, and he does lose one for free, yeah. which is a little bit awkward. But the second one is going to come in and keep killing SCVs. Yeah, this is a pretty big move. A nice scan does go down on the DT. DT unable to get out of that. Only getting three uh, three SCVs, which for the cost of a shuttle and two DTs is not worth it in the slightest. And it is going to put Fisheye behind, especially because uh, Bai, I, like, while all this was going on, he built the wall at his uh, front ramp. He's built a semi-wall at the other ramp, and he's immediately taken a third base. So Bai is very, very well versed in this matchup, especially on this map. Yeah, what a god. Perfect reaction. That's exactly what I was talking about. Players know, hey, I'm taking this damage. This is the build. This is how I hold against it. And, uh, I mean, it's exactly what he did. Perfect practice uh, reaction. So, um, yeah, by you can tell he's a really solid Terran player. Um, you know, if he's race swapping and I'm just, you know, shouldn't be saying that. Yeah, he is Terran. I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, he actually is a very strong uh, player, and one of the one of the strengths that you see, like, there's a, there's a number of things that you improve at as you lose hundreds of games and then transition to winning hundreds of games. It is, um, like, the the speed at which you can react to things. So overall game knowledge, of course, that increases. But then when you see something, what do you do? Uh, and he's done everything absolutely correctly. Yeah, he is. Like, some people may look at this turret ring and think, wow, that's... That's a serious waste of minerals, you don't need those. You really do. Like, it's so, so important. And as a Terran player, one of the biggest things you can lose to is you think you've got enough defense, and then like a DT drop gets into your main, you run out of scans, and then you run out of hope. And the, like these turrets just make it impossible for any, any shots to get in. He's also got the flash style of per like placing them perfectly so any shot that goes in will get hit by both turrets at all times, making it a lot harder for shuttles to get in, even with speed. Uh, but Fisheye, interestingly, is choosing to expand towards his opponent to take a fourth base. Now, uh, the reason for this is, of course, if you look at the architecture of the map, to take the other main, he's actually going to be a little bit closer uh, to his opponent, but of course this is within drop range. Yeah. Uh, so dry, within drop range, it, it uh, certainly is. I'm excited that this is uh, a strategy that is working better than I expected. So um, I, I hope it's not super punished, but it absolutely could be. I, I just wonder who's going to commit to dropping who more. Well, we're certainly going to have possibly a recall coming in. He does have the uh, Arbiter uh, Tribunal up. It's going for Stasis first. Stasis incredibly important against uh, early game Protoss. Now, you can see by using a lot of his scans just to check absolutely everything. He doesn't want to get caught off guard by anything. And he's using his vultures really well as well, just to lay some mines out in the middle of the map, get some of that map vision. 
And also just keep an eye on the Protoss. So only plus one upgrade done for our Terran player. Should be seeing another couple of upgrades coming in soon. Plus one armor uh, and plus two attack. So he's going to go for a 2-1 attack here that could push out a little bit sooner. Uh, he does know his opponent's trying to take a fourth base. So this could be in reaction to that. Uh, but the Terran player, Bai, is certainly in a good position right now. And it's actually going to be quite hard without good stasis for Fisheye to really hold on to this. Yeah, uh, and he does not have that. He's actually uh, researching recall instead. So... Uh, he got that first. He already got stasis. Oh, did, oh, did he already yeah. get stasis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wasn't watching the production tab. I'm not cheating like you are. I'm not using the production tab. I clicked on the building earlier. <laughs> Wow, okay, I'm just bad and you're amazing. Okay, we'll, we'll just go with that one. I can't save myself here. He's going to help, but of course, mine's revealed the teeth, so it's scanned, so that gets taken out. Um, and I, I think that uh, Bai realizes, hey, there's a, an easier prey. Yeah. And he's just going to push out and take out the fourth. Now, not only this, but by taking this position, he blocks off the natural uh, sort of big ramp down into the main, or down into the middle. And the Arbiter in the wrong position. Oh my god, a huge Mind Drag actually taking out a couple of Dragoons there. And Fisheye just not engaging this well at all. A great engagement by Bai. Great unit positioning as well. And I mean, we could be saying bye bye to Fisheye here. Right now. <laughs> bye, bye. I've been Shy, thinking of the. Like uh, oh. Nice mind drag on the Zalot, doesn't get too much. Yeah. Uh, but I've I've been thinking about the Backstreet Boys song, which is like ba 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 in the ba ba ba. Uh, yeah, well that would be what you'd sing if you were losing, but uh, he's doing pretty well. Yeah, he's doing pretty well. Uh, but you know what? I mean, Fisheye just not engaging this properly at all. There's mines blocking off the side ramp as well, and Bai is just Bai is looking like he is certainly the stronger player on the day here now. Bai gonna look to push up to this ramp. This is something you can never normally do, but he is so far ahead. He's actually just going with the A move. Does do a siege in a very precarious position, but it's gonna work out for him. And Fisheye down 80 supply now almost is gonna struggle to hold on any longer. And we do have that fourth mason for uh, Bai as well. Right, and that's really kind of the nail in the coffin behind all this besides the actual battles, the economic yeah. battle being absolutely one so this third is going to die and with it the hope is to shine yep now unfortunately it was a little bit more of a one-sided game he actually got a nice d matrix down a nice kill on the zealot but those mines are very close to all those tanks but still that mine drag not doing too much i mean fisheye trying to push in against these tanks he's not got jangby storms though so it's going to be very difficult all his dragoons going down again and slowly but surely uh, with these huge amounts of reinforcements coming in, the 5th base coming up from Bai as well. Fisheye is slowly, slowly dying here. Yep, uh, the 3rd base will go down. This is very, uh, I, not very, very highly upgraded, but 1-2 is still very good for, for a mech at this stage. Yeah. And uh, of course he has the next level of upgrades coming through. Not the case for Fisheye who's still on just plus 1. Yeah, Fish, I can't really afford to go for any more upgrades. A nice stasis going down, but there's just not enough units. I don't normally like calling out, I said this before, but this is just way too many units from our Terran player. Great, great job by Bai. Very good macro by him as well, and GG. Bai is going to take down Fisheye and give uh, White a little bit of hope. Well, not hope. Well, I guess it is hope because they went 3 for 1 in the end. Uh, but I'm gonna take it back to the overlay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Rapid go as well. So, uh, just so I can sort of close up and he can go and get some sleep. Uh, but hopefully you had fun, Rapid. I had fun casting with you. Any closing words for your wonderful fans? No, that's uh, that's gonna be all. I actually have to get going really quickly. So thank you always, as always, for having me, Kicks, and thanks for running STPL. I know it's a big commitment, but it's always nice to have more Brood War games. And congratulations to the players and teams that won today. It's uh, great to get a chance to cast those, and I hope everybody that watched uh, enjoyed the games as much as I did. Okay, well, you sound unbelievably tired, so please do go get some sleep. And uh, enjoy the, I guess you'll be watching the um, GSL versus World Finals tomorrow. So have fun with those. And uh, see you next time. That I will. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.
Okay, now I have a little bit more to say. I'm not quite done yet. Uh, the casting is done for today, but there's a couple more things I need to show off before we finish up. Uh, but great, great series there by uh, Red and White. I'm really glad we saved that one till last. Uh, just quickly saving all the details and everything. And uh, let's have a look at the results. And I mean, some might say this is a very, very surprising set of results, but let's have a look. Okay, so as you can see there, White Clan being taken out by Red uh, in a 3-1 victory. Cadenzi taking down Juani. Uh, that was a really cool ZVT by her. Uh, Ku taking down Famasi, the best player from round one. Ku is going to be feeling good about that game in a ZVT on Hitchhiker. Cryok taking down Ho in another cool TVZ on Neo Electric Circuit. And by taking out Fisheye in that final game on Aztec, giving a little bit of hope, adding an extra win to, uh, to the white score uh, at the end there. But still, a great, great job by them. Uh, white showed some really great games as well, but Red on the day just playing a little bit better. And is this a sign to come from Red? Because Red are doing a great job so far in the league. They're 3 for 0. And they are doing a great amount of work. And they're certainly improving every single week I cast them. And let's have a look at what's coming up in the next week of SCPL. Or, or not, apparently. Because this isn't done. Enjoy my poorly laid out overlay. Ah, but there we go. So, next week in the SCPL, we have four Group A. No dates have been announced yet, but it will be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, I've not decided what game to cast on what day, so uh, we're going to have Naz versus Bull. Uh, we're going to have Psystorm versus DM. Media versus Red. Ninth Team versus Soul Gaming. And Net Wars versus Clan Revolution. Now, of course, uh, it's not quite over yet. Uh, I am going to quickly throw up the, the thing that allows me to do the thing. Uh, I'm going to show up the ranking table again just to see how this worked out and how everything did. Uh, but to do that, I need to quickly reload the overlay, so just give me a second. Uh, but still, great, great games today. I had a lot of fun casting with Rapid again. Hugely grateful for him for constantly joining me. I know it's always so, so late in Korea. And I genuinely wasn't expecting him to come today because I thought he really, really will be tired. Uh, but let's have a look at the ranking table because there is a bit of a surprising thing happening right here, right now in round two of the SCPL. Red are at the very top of the table. Three for zero, nine for four. White Clan in second in their group, three for one. Currently, uh, Red's next game is going to be very important for them. They are going to be against Meteor, and if they want to come out on top here, they are going to have to be down at Meteor in any way they can. Uh, but just to quickly have a look at the player table, just to see if there's been any shift there. There has, we're going to have Ku and Cryok joining Yeti in the top spot of the top 10 of round 2. Uh, all with 3 for 0, you can see that Yeti... Has played, uh, it looks like Ku and Cryox games from round one haven't properly uh, sort of saved themselves. But you can see in round two, both of them going three for zero against Zerg. So uh, great, great work by them. And Yeti, of course, in a close third. Well, close joint first. And then the other players as well. So uh, no movement at the bottom of the table. Sugo, Apparently with the White Clan logo, but he is on Naz. He just sneaks in just above Eon Zerg. It's just because they're all equal. So when I load the overlay, the uh, the overlay doesn't know what to put where. Uh, but either way, great, great games by them. Great games today from everyone as well. A uh, huge thank you to everybody who tuned in. Anyone who donated, just to point out as well, the prize pool, I believe, is still sat around $1,100. Uh, that's US dollars, of course. A uh, great, huge prize pool. Uh, thanks to a lot of generous donators. Thanks to Matarino as well, the sponsor, who did give a lot of codes. I'm going to ask to see if we can get a couple more codes as well, because I imagine the codes run out. Uh, but if you do want to donate to the tournament, you can actually donate a free dollar using the code STPL2, if that still works. 
Uh, of course, if you do want to support the tournament, the best way you can do it is just give the channel a follow, tune in again next time, and hopefully you're going to have a good time. So, uh, looks like my delay on my stream is a little bit long, uh, longer than it normally is. But either way, thank huge thank you to everyone who tuned in. Hope to see you again next time. A huge thank you to all the players who got their games played and for showing us a wonderful evening of Brood War. So, have a good night, morning, afternoon, evening, weekend. Uh, can't think of anything else. Sunday, Saturday, wherever you are. And I will see you guys on Monday. Ciao. And just, uh, just quickly, ciao from my cat as well, who is currently melting. So, there we go. See you guys next time. I'll find someone to host. Don't go anywhere.